Yo, what's up YouTube? It's been a while since I've been in the garage and filming, but I've gotten a lot done over the last few weeks and I got some big things ready for this video. So first off, I am gonna finish up the subframe and get that in the car. And then once that's back in the car, the engine is coming out of the car. So basically to finish this thing up, uh, I just gotta scuff everything down, clean it, and I'm just gonna spray it, uh, keep it from rusting. So I'm going to I'm going to do that pretty quick. I'm not going to, you know, try to make it look too nice. So if everything's covered, I'm happy. So I'm going to get that done first, put my bushings in. Uh next coming over, he's going to help me get it in. And then what I'm going to do is pull the engine back out. So over the last 2 weeks I haven't been filming much, but I sorted out my cooling system, my fueling system, and I started on my wiring. So um the next thing to do is actually to take the engine out because then I can finalize everything. I can relocate my ABS, I can tuck my wiring harness, I can strip down my engine harness for the LS, then I can paint the engine bay and make it look all nice. And if you remember from another video, I also need to cut some material out of the trans tunnel. So once the engine's back out, I can clear more space in the trans tunnel here and make more room for my shifter. I'll go ahead and cut the top of that stock shifter off and that'll be all ready to go. And then as you can see, I already got the dash out. so. I can go ahead and get started on wiring. Um, I did start labeling some things, cutting off connectors that I know I'm not gonna need so that I can de-loom everything and uh, pull those wires out. I'm going for a tucked engine bay look. It's not gonna be fully tucked, but I at least need to get rid of these stock chassis harnesses running straight down the side. Uh, I think they're the ugliest thing ever, and I think too many people leave them in place. So I'm gonna get rid of those and I'll paint the engine bay and then we can reassemble everything. All right, guys, like I said, uh, I just wanted to get everything covered. I think I got underneath enough. Uh, the good thing is underneath, I can still get to once it's in the car. So I basically just loaded it on the top, uh, made sure I got enough coats on the top. And then uh, from underneath, you know, like I said, I can always uh, I can always reach those places if I need to touch something up. So. What's up everybody back in the garage um so last weekend um got the subframe in and i don't know how much um i got on film uh, i tried to time lapse it but i think my camera cut out but the subframe is in and you can see my uh solid del rim bushings are in um so that went in pretty smoothly uh, no issues i'm excited to see how those feel uh see see how much vibration i get out of them so and I, I got started um, last weekend on removing the chassis harness, which is all of this bundle of junk. So I got that all removed so that I can pull the engine right out. And then the idea is I'm gonna be tucking those wires in behind the dash and rerunning them uh, for a tucked bay. So I got those out of the way. And I also went ahead and started playing around with my ABS block. Um, I got these lines disconnected figured out some new routing and I'm going to relocate that after the engine's out. So um, kind of have that all planned out, have my lines ready. And now the next step is to remove the engine. All 
All right, so this beast is out. Um, that was extremely easy because my radio support's gone. So, um, you know, it's kind of a sacrifice to get rid of the stock um, factory body, keep it streetcar, or get rid of it and have all these benefits. So I'm okay with uh, getting rid of it. Um, I have my own made up that I just need to finish welding up. And whenever I fully assemble everything, I'll show you guys that. So there's obviously so much to do on this thing. Um, there's stuff in the engine bay. There's stuff on the engine. There's plenty to do to keep me busy for a while. And it's very hard to decide what to do next. So I'd really like to get into the wiring side of things. All right, guys. So I decided to start getting into the wiring. Uh, now my plan is to wire tuck this thing. So I really do not like the big chassis harness loom running across the front so i'm eliminating that at least that's the plan anyways the goal is to mount the fuse box and ecu on the passenger footwell and reroute all my harness down each end that way there's nothing running across the front except for the fan plugs i'm gonna attempt that i got a little intimidated because i thought i was gonna have to depin all of these wires from the fuse box which would have been a nightmare. So what I'm doing instead is unplugging everything down in the driver's side footwell, and I'm gonna attempt to pull it up through here. That way, pretty much I can put the harness inside and then pull all of my other wires out as I need them and then wrap them up in a harness and tuck them. So that's the plan. I think that's gonna be the easiest way. I also think that way there's gonna be very minimal wire extension, pretty much, like there's so much length of wire here that I think uh, no matter where I mount my fuse box or ECU, I'm going to have enough length to reach where I need to go. Um, it might be just like a couple headlight um, wires to extend. Um, I think I'll probably have to extend my ABS connector, which is a lot of wires. So it's kind of unfortunate, but that's the plan. I think that's going to minimize how many wires I have to extend and also keep me from having to deep pin all my fuse box and uh, just get into all that mess. So... All right guys, so with a little help, I got the wiring harness out. So this is what plugs in down in the driver's side footwell. Um, there's a fuse box down there. There's a few plugs. Uh, not quite sure what everything goes to, but um, so now the what this does for me is this makes it so much easier to get my fuse box inside the car because now I can start inside the car and feed all my small plugs out. Um, whereas before, it was basically gonna be impossible to get that in the car with everything else connected because just a tiny little hole back there. So the goal is gonna to be to plug up that hole somehow and basically feed my wiring harness out here through the fender. Um, and then same thing over here. I think I'll be able to maybe just drill a hole back here somewhere and feed it straight up through. And I might even be able to run it inside of this tube here just to keep it protected, but um, yeah, big, big steps. This will make it a lot easier. Yo, what is up YouTube back in the garage? It's the next day and I got some work done on the engine. So as you saw yesterday, I was doing some work on this harness, basically just labeling, figuring out what needs extended. Um, I took a break from that. On to more exciting things. What's up, Matt? So, <laughs> so the LS harness, um, I'm using the stock harness from the 2002 Camaro. 
Um, basically what I did, I was using lt1swap.com and basically turning this into a standalone harness. So you can see um, Matt and I decided this was about two or three pounds of wire that we got out of there. Um, everything I don't need is out of the harness. There's just a few, few like, you know, extra signal wires and stuff that I, I just want to figure out if I need to keep them or wrap them up and save them for later. Um, but for the most part, everything is good to go. This is going to go straight through the firewall into the passenger side footwell. And yeah, it's, it's all thinned out. I'll have a nice thin loom up here that I can tuck. And uh, same here, there's actually only two wires here at the end. So that is getting really close. And then I just need to figure out my fuse box situation and uh, starter wires and whatnot. Moving quickly on that. And Nick's here doing some cool stuff, as you see. He's got a sick racing seat. He actually has two of them. But today we're just trying to get one in and a harness bar. Yeah, so Nick, give us the rundown on the seat. Anything special? No, <laughs> picked up off Facebook. Just rad, rad seat on the cheap. Yeah. And got the old universal harness bar that we're making work. And it actually fit in very nicely with no modification. Um, the only thing we'll have to modify are the uh, little support braces here that go down to the floor. So those basically just need shortened, right? Yes. Shortened in a bracket. Yes. So that'd be nice and easy. Um, Nick has been working on his uh, mounting plate or mounting bracket for the seat and uh, that's about to get tacked up. So um, yeah, we're going to get one in tonight. He might be putting in the second one. He doesn't know yet. Yeah, I'm excited. He'll either put it in or sell it. I've heard that the racing seat or the bucket seat mm -hmm. should be like your first drift mod. Yeah, a lot of people so, say that. Yeah. So this is going to be like a huge, huge difference. Oh, I figured that out on the track. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard once I first started learning how to transition and link turns, you figure yeah. out once you get a good link going and you flip back and you get I like literally sliding out of the seat. Yeah, I believe it. So that'll be awesome. And it'll look sick. And this thing is a race car, so it's a good uh it's fitting. Yeah. <laughs> Do you still need to drill holes in your bracket or what? Yeah, I don't know where to put the seat. Okay. It might be too low. <laughs> uh oh. For you? Is it comfortable? Oh no, it's better. I put the bracket totally up. That thing's sick, dude. Might be a little low. Freaking riding riding dirty in there. Dude. <laughs> on the ground now. So I'm going a bit overboard here. Um, because I want to wire tuck this thing and make everything as easy to get to as possible. What I'm doing is de-looming some of this stuff. That way I can move the wires where I want them to. So remember originally this loom here ran the whole way across the front of the car uh, behind the radiator. And so some of these wires, like here are the fan plugs, um, the power steering wires and such, they kind of all come out at the wrong spot. So uh, ECU is gonna be mounted in the passenger uh, interior. And so uh, the stuff that's gonna come down the passenger side of the car up to the headlight into the fans and power steering, um, I want that all to come out at the same spot. So what I did, uh, these are the power steering, um, power steering wires. So uh, these originally came out right here at this intersection. I deloomed that and pulled those out over here. Um, I'll probably still have to extend them, but that gives me a lot less I have to add on to them. Um, now the fans, those actually uh, go to the other side of the fuse box. So again, the fuse box ECUs are all gonna be mounted in the passenger footwell. So what I'll do is actually de-loom the rest of this, bring it over to the fuse box, and then I'll have that extra length on the fans too. And I'll probably only have to add maybe like a foot or two of wire. So that'll be very nice. 
Uh, and then basically everything on this side of the fuse box is all of the driver's side stuff. Uh, right now we're looking good. I'm cutting out stuff I don't need. Um, I think I cut out the air pump wiring and the map sensor, uh, coolant level sensor is gone. Um, AC line, now this I am saving in case I wanna add in AC, so that's just gonna get tucked in uh, in the footwell there. Um, I am gonna keep like impact sensor. I think there's like an ambient air temperature sensor. I'm gonna keep that. Yeah, so we're, we're kinda, I'm kinda moving along here and uh, I think I wanna at least get this thing into the car so that I have a good idea of length and how long I need to extend all my wires. All right, guys, uh, this is as far as I've gotten tonight. Um, I basically got the fuse box down here, uh, kind of in the position I want it. I'll probably sit a little bit further back and maybe tilt it up like that. Um, I'll put the OEM cover on. It'll be kind of hidden. Um, and then what I need to figure out is mounting for my power steering module. I'd like to maybe somehow mount it to the top of this thing. Uh, so maybe I'll make like a plate across that and... Uh, I don't know, I'll figure something out. And then also my ECU, this is the Mazda ECU. Um, so I need to figure out a place to put this. I'm thinking about kind of not really deleting the glove box, but it would just be kind of there serving no purpose. I'd cut out the inside of it and have a spot to mount that. Haven't decided that yet. It's gonna kind of come down to the end what I wanna do with it. Um, the big thing is once I get everything close, I can wire everything in that I need to. So like I would consider this close. So now I can go ahead and start extending all my wires that are gonna go to this side of the car. And then uh, these are the wires here that are gonna go to that side of the car. So um, I can go ahead and extend those. I'll just add more than I need. That way if I do wanna reroute it a different way, um, I'll have it. So I think that's you know pretty good progress for tonight. Um, like I said, I can, I can get it running with like nothing bolted in, um, and then I can come back and clean everything up. So I think that's a good spot to end the video. Um, I think what we did in this video was, uh, get the subframe back in, which was huge. Everything slid right in. My bushing seemed, uh, like they'll fit fine and work fine. Um, started working on the wiring on the engine, tore the wiring harness out of the chassis and uh, now put the wiring harness back in the chassis just in a different spot. So yeah, everything's uh, starting to come together, starting to get into the nitty gritty. And this thing is just that much closer to running. So, so next video, maybe some more wiring, maybe some engine based stuff, relocating ABS, uh, redoing my ABS lines, uh, fuel lines, little stuff like that. We'll see. Um, still a lot to do, but we're getting closer. So. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys later.